PC VR gaming gets you way better visuals and access to thousands of new games and mods that make gaming on your wireless VR headset absolutely insane. But it's tough to know which setup is best for you and what gear you'll need to get this working perfectly. Today I'm going to cover the best routers, setups and PC specs. Welcome programs to part 2 of my 13 video course on wireless PC VR gaming. This is a complete guide, so if you want to know what good truly looks like and how to get it, then stay locked, enjoy and I hope it helps. If you want to follow along with this complete course, check the links in the description to the other videos and for the equipment I use personally. I'd strongly recommend you watch from the first video and I'll tell you when to skip videos based on your specific VR setup. With that said, these are the types of routers you'll need to get the most out of your specific VR headset. The Quest 1 is a Wi-Fi 5 headset and the max speed you can get out of Wi-Fi 5 is 860. 66 megabits per second when it's connected to a 5 gigahertz frequency band. So if you have a Quest 1, any Wi-Fi 5 router with 866 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band is all you'll need. The Quest 2 or the Pico 4 are Wi-Fi 6 devices and so a Wi-Fi 6 router with 1200 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band is what you're looking for. For example, we can see online this Asus AX1800 Wi-Fi 6 router has 1200 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band. It's worth noting here that you should avoid any TP-Link or Huawei Wi-Fi 6 routers as they have known issues with wireless VR gaming. And the Quest 3, 3S and Pro are Wi-Fi 6E devices. So a Wi-Fi 6 router with a 160 megahertz channel bandwidth option on it and at least 2400 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band or a Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7 router with the additional 6 gigahertz band on it is what you'll need to get the fastest possible speeds out of these headsets. All Wi-Fi 6E routers have that 6 gigahertz frequency band, but not all Wi-Fi 7 routers do, so keep that in mind. The reason I say a Wi-Fi 6 router is also fine for these Wi-Fi 6E headsets to get the max speed out of them is because the Quest 3, 3 S and Pro cap out at 2400 megabits per second data transfer speed between your PC and the headset. And you can get that speed on a Wi-Fi 6 router if it supports 160 megahertz wide channels on it, like the Asus AX58U aka AX3000 router. I strongly advise against using a 160 megahertz wide channel on a Wi-Fi 6 router if you live in an apartment or have neighbors close by though, as that 160 megahertz channel width will pick up way more interference from their Wi-Fi networks, which is bad as I mentioned in the last video in this course. In this case, just stick to a narrower 80 megahertz wide channel on the 5 gigahertz band and just run with a 1200 megabits per second connection speed. And that's where the 6 gigahertz frequency band on Wi-Fi 6E and some Wi-Fi 7 routers really starts to become of benefit. This separate 6 gigahertz band can be clear of interference from other devices, particularly your neighbor's devices, which means a smoother VR gaming experience for you. But to benefit from the 6 gigahertz frequency band, you'll need to fit both these two criteria at a minimum. You have a Quest 3, 3S, Quest Pro or other Wi-Fi 6E VR headset and you have a clear line of sight with nothing between you and the router, so no walls or major obstacles blocking the way. You'll also need to fit at least one of these two criteria as well. You live in an apartment block and have neighbours close by or you can't or don't want to get the other Wi-Fi devices in your home, like your flatmates or parents' phones, tablets and TVs, to all 
switch over to the slower 2.4 GHz band, so your VR headset can be the only device using the 5 GHz band. If you do fit both of the first two criteria, plus at least one of these two criteria, you will benefit from and I would recommend a Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7 router with the additional 6 GHz frequency band on it. If you don't fit that criteria, you can use a Wi-Fi 6 router instead. Just as importantly, whatever router you are buying or using, make sure the LAN ports on it are rated for at least 1 gigabit speeds. Anything less than that and you'll want to pick up a new router. And these are the tried and tested routers from the virtual desktop Discord community for wireless VR headsets. Check the link in the description for that and in one of the help channels, type forward slash routers in the chat and hit enter to see the most recently updated list. In addition to these, I can personally recommend for the Quest 1, pretty much any Wi-Fi 5 router, for the Quest 2 or Pico 4, an Asus AX1800 aka AX54HP, AX55 or AX56U, and for the Quest 3, 3S or Pro, either the Asus AX3000 aka AX58U or if you want to go with Wi-Fi 6E, the TP-Link AXE5400 aka AXE75. You should avoid mesh routers and network switches between your PC and VR router as well as Wi-Fi 6 routers from TP-Link or Huawei as I mentioned before. And you can of course use any lower spec router for any Quest headset and it will work, but you won't get the best results and that's not what this course is about. To sum all that up, take note of your VR headset's Wi-Fi standard and the frequency band that's best for you to get the max speeds, then buy or use a router that has those specs at a minimum. Now you know which type of router to use or buy, from here there are 7 different setups you can have in your home, and each one depends on how many routers you have and whether or not you can run cables throughout your house. I'll cover all 7 possible setups now, then show you how to connect them all up in the later videos. Take note of these setups and pick the one that's right for you, because from here on out I'll be telling you when to skip ahead based on your specific setup throughout this course and it's important you get this right. First, there's a standalone router setup. For this setup, you need to run an Ethernet cable from your standalone router to your gaming PC or your PC's USB-C to Ethernet adapter if that's what you're using. This will send your VR game and internet access to your PC and wirelessly to your VR headset. If you can't run that cable from your standalone router, then you'll have to go with one of the other setups instead. At this point, if you're using a standalone setup, you can now check the timestamps in the description and skip ahead to the recommended PC and laptop specs section of this video. For the second setup, you can use a cable dedicated VR router setup, and this is hands down the best setup you can have. For this setup, you'll need to run an Ethernet cable from your main home router to your dedicated VR router, and another Ethernet cable from your dedicated VR router to your PC's Ethernet port or USB-C Ethernet adapter for your VR game and internet access. If you can't run that cable from your main home router, for example if you're in another room, the other option you have is to use power line or mocha adapters. These types of adapters act as an ethernet cable from your main home router to your dedicated VR router and they only impact your internet speed because your VR game is handled separately by your dedicated VR router and PC. Powerline adapters plug into a wall socket near your main home router and then a wall power socket near your dedicated VR router and PC and they send your internet signal through the electrical wiring in your walls. Mocha adapters do a similar thing but with coaxial cable ports in your walls if you have them. These send your internet signal through coaxial cable in your walls that's been designed 
designed for transmitting internet signals, which is why you can get better results versus power line adapters. Make sure that if you use either of these, they are rated for one gigabit speeds at a minimum. Mocha adapters will add a small amount of latency versus a straight ethernet cable, but can actually be really good. Power line adapters can have mixed results and almost never reach the advertised speeds as it all depends on the electrical wiring in your home, which wasn't designed for internet signal. And because of that, before you go out and buy a power line kit, if your gaming PC is within Wi-Fi range of your main home router, I'd recommend first trying one of the third or fourth setups I'll cover next. At this point, if you are going a fully cabled or power line or mocha setup though, you can now skip ahead to the recommended PC and laptop specs section of this video. Third, if you don't want to run a cable or power line or mocha adapters from your main home router to your dedicated VR router, you can instead connect your PC to your main home router via Wi-Fi to get internet to your PC and VR headset. In this setup, your PC will need to have Wi-Fi on it, either built in or from a Wi-Fi network card or USB Wi-Fi adapter and be within range of your main home router. If your PC is not within Wi-Fi range of your main home router or you don't have a main home router at all, you'll need to go with the fourth setup I'll cover next. Ideally, the network card or USB Wi-Fi adapter you get will be the same Wi-Fi standard as your main home router, so you get the best speeds out of it. For example, if you have a Wi-Fi 6 main home router, get a Wi-Fi 6 network card or USB Wi-Fi adapter for your PC. With this setup, you'll need to have a solid internet connection from your main home router to your PC's Wi-Fi if you're playing games online, like Population 1, Contractors or Pavlov. For games that are played offline, like Skyrim or Half-Life Alex or whatever, the speed of your internet connection doesn't matter. You'll also need to set up internet connection sharing, aka ICS, on your PC, and I'll show you how to do that. If this is the setup you're going with, you can and now skip ahead to the recommended PC and laptop specs section of this video. If your PC's Wi-Fi is out of the Wi-Fi range of your main home router, or you don't have a main home router at all, you can instead go with the fourth setup. Here, you'd simply use a mobile hotspot on your phone instead of a main home router to get internet access to your PC and VR headset. Again, you'll need to have Wi-Fi either built in or added to your PC with a Wi-Fi adapter, like I mentioned in the third setup, and you'll also need to set up internet connection sharing aka ICS for this one. Again, this setup will only impact your internet speed and still gets you solid results. If you're going with this setup, you can now skip ahead to the recommended PC and laptop specs section of this video. Fifth, if your PC doesn't have Wi-Fi at all for whatever reason, you can go with a dedicated VR router only setup for VR gaming. This means you won't have internet access to your PC or VR headset, and it'll just be you, your PC, your dedicated VR router, and your VR headset. This setup is used if you'll only be gaming offline. Just keep in mind, you'll still need to download and install some software on your PC for any of this to work. So at some point, you'll need to connect your PC to the internet somehow, at least for the initial setup. If this is the setup you want to use, you can now skip ahead to the recommended PC and laptop specs section of this video. Almost last and definitely least, you can use a mobile hotspot on your PC and connect your VR headset directly to that Wi-Fi. This is easily the worst setup, but if you literally have no other option, it is possible to do it this way. For this one, your PC will need to have really solid Wi-Fi built into it. To check that, hit the Windows key on your keyboard, type CMD, Click on this to open a command prompt and type net sh space wlan space show space drivers and hit enter.
In this list, you'll see your PC's Wi-Fi adapter. You can search that online and see if it's any good or just take your chances and see how it pans out. Just be aware your Wi-Fi will have to support the 5 GHz frequency band at a minimum. You'll get mixed results at best and even a $40 dedicated VR router will be better than this setup. Also, there's two ways you can set this up to get internet to your VR headset. One is to get internet from your main home router's Wi-Fi network. The other way is to get internet access from a mobile hotspot on your phone. If you have a main home router and you're within Wi-Fi range of it when you're gaming, this is the way I'd recommend. Though I'll show you how to set it up both ways in this course. Also worth mentioning is the Purpose S1 Wi-Fi 6 router from Prism XR, which just plugs into your PC and gives gives you a private Wi-Fi network ready for VR gaming. This is actually a really solid option. I still prefer a good Wi-Fi 6 router, or particularly for my Quest 3, a Wi-Fi 6E router, but you can get good enough results from this router. I won't cover how to set these up in this course, as you just follow the simple steps in the manual and you're good to go. With the setups out of the way, let's talk gaming PC and laptop specs. For the graphics card, you can get anything from an NVIDIA GTX 970 or AMD RX 580 GPU up to an RTX 40 or 5090 or AMD RX 7900 XTX. My recommendation would be something with a RTX 3070 or higher, peak would be an RTX 4080 or 40. 90 or Nvidia's new 50 series graphics cards, or the equivalent AMD card if you can fund it. The better the GPU, the more demanding games and mods you can run. The CPU just needs to be able to keep up with the GPU, stick with 16 gigabytes of RAM at a minimum, ideally 32 gig DDR4 or DDR5, and your PC will need a 1 gigabit Ethernet port on it, or if you are using a laptop laptop that doesn't have an Ethernet port on it, it's totally fine to use a USB 3 Type A or Type C 1 gigabit Ethernet adapter. And you can check the links in the description of this video for all the parts I use personally and a GPU comparison chart. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below and I'll help you out there. Now you know which router to buy and what PC specs you need for wireless VR gaming, you need to know some network and Windows performance tweaks to get the best quality and speeds out of your VR headset. To know that, you can check the links in the description of this video and go to the Network and Windows Tweaks video in this course. And that's it for this video. You can help support this channel and get exclusive content over on Patreon. And if you like this video, then hit the like button, have your say in the comments below and hit the XO logo to subscribe if you wanna. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.